Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to the first trading day of the week, April 15, 2024. In fact, I did a night shift last night and that's my last rostered shift for April. I do two other non-rostered shifts, two swaps, uh, Friday nights the next two weeks and some people might find it weird. I actually prefer to work night shifts than day shifts. Now, not the best day on the Australian market. And the reason I am recording this video one hour earlier than the closing is because typically not much happens in the last hour. And I prefer to record these videos at about 3 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. 4 p.m. is just getting a little bit too late. And again, nothing really happens. It's not like the American market. Sometimes the American markets can be quite volatile in the last hour. Um, we have seen that, or oh, I have seen that quite a few times. But very rarely do you see the Australian markets become volatile in the last hour. I think everyone is closing up shop. Well, all the investors are closing up shop. Um, and most of the trading has already been done for the day. But down a little bit. And the good thing is there was potential for us to be down way more than 0.5%. does look like the mining sector has done well today based off resources up 0.5%. And the reason I say that is on Friday, the American markets were down big about 1.5% down. And I think a lot of that um, negative sentiment in the American markets on Friday was just around what has been happening in the Middle East. And it does seem like at this point in time, at this point in time, that things won't be escalated by Israel. And I think that's good news for all of us. We don't want things to be escalating over there. In fact, one colleague at work mentioned World War III. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think um, we have cool heads at this point in time. Um, Iran did their stupid thing uh, that unsuccessfully at that. And I think now is time for Israel to say, hey, let's just keep moving on. Iran has had their fun. They failed to achieve anything really, um, except for, you, know, you, you might have seen some footage in Tehran, uh, people celebrating in the streets, uh, but that's just propaganda from the Iranian government. Anyway, this is not a political channel. We're talking about what has happened on the markets today. A bit of a rundown, even though there's one hour left. And some interesting things have happened on the market today. Some interesting announcements. I found about 10 announcements I wanted to talk, talk about. I've whittled that down to six. Whittled that down to six, including two Appendix 4Cs. And these are two Appendix 4Cs I was really looking forward to including Drone Shield and Quoria, uh, Q-O-R-I-A, used to be called Family Zone. Uh, and I'll have a look at those, both of those, the Penny's Four Cs. We'll also have a look at the cash receipts history for both Drone Shield and Quoria. And three, actually, I'll talk about four other companies that released interesting announcements today. Uh, we did see a profit upgrade. My favorite type of announcement, profit upgrade. Share price barely nudged. And I'll try to explain, maybe unsuccessfully, why the share price of this company barely budged. We'll also have a look at another company who released guidance, financial guidance for this financial year. I don't think it was a profit upgrade, but the market has reacted well to that um, particularly particular announcement. That was from FOS Capital, FOS Capital. Also have a look at Findy. They achieved white label success, but again, uh, share price down. So this was sort of the announcement we were looking forward to in regards to Findy. Share price is down, and I'll try to explain that, why the share price is down today. I don't think it's the overall sentiment or negative sentiment in the market. Uh, may, must be some other reason. And then I'll have a look at Coventry Group, uh, the company that almost did make it into my list, and they made an acquisition. And this acquisition is actually interesting, uh, and I'll talk about why. That particular, this particular acquisition is intriguing to me. But before we have a look at the announcements and before we have a look at some charts, I have no idea what charts I'm going to show you today. No idea at all. I should actually mention beforehand, before I move on, look at the market today. Uh, I actually did make two acquisitions today. I took advantage of some company share price falling a little bit. Uh, GQG, I bought some shares in that. And Ansel as well. 
bought some shares in that company today, uh, hoping there's going to be a nice bounce tomorrow. And I think there's a good chance that the American markets will have a really good bounce and will follow through as well, particularly if nothing negative happens again in the Middle East. Okay, let's see what happens on the Australian markets today. We you know it's down a little bit. We'll have a look at the sectors and the indices. And it looks like if you just look at the sectors, only two sectors were up. And those are the two mining sectors, materials and energy. Well, energy is not completely mining. You have like AGO in there. In fact, AGO, I was thinking of maybe uh, taking a sneaky bid with AGO, and I haven't really looked at how AGO has performed today, uh, down 1.33%. So possible interesting trade with AGL energy. And I'd say, well, it says it's in utilities, so maybe not. So maybe, maybe, in fact, if I open up the sector, do we get to see companies within the sector? We do. We do, we do. So let's have a look by market cap. Is there any non-mining companies? So Woodside, that's a you know gas and oil company, Santos Gas and Oil. Ampol is not really a mining company. They just sell fuel. Yang Coal, Coal. So we have Coal, Coal. Viva Energy. I'm pretty sure they just sell um, um, petrol. Then we have Coal, Oil and, oil and Gas. Uh, uranium is here. Oil and gas, uranium, uranium, uh, MA offshore. Yeah, so not completely uh, a mining uh, sector or index because we have quite a few non-mining companies within this list. Uh, MA offshore, that's a perfect example, but the majority are. So anyway, the whole point of me going on that little bit of a tangent is the mining sector lifted up the Australian market today. That's why we're not down by a significant amount because IT down 1.61%. Industrials, discretionary, healthcare, telecommunications, financials, and utilities, and even real estate, all down by more than 0.5%. Staples, which is a little bit defensive, uh, that's the thing you want to buy into, staples, um, almost flat for the day. And do I really have to go and look at the indices? Most indices will be down today. So let's have a look. And so resources up, anything to do with energy, resources probably up today. So four indices up, 300 metals and mining, 200 resources, material sector, and the energy sector. And consumer staples down a little bit. ASX 20, only down 0.16. Uh, and let's have a look at the ASX 20 to see how many companies are down, how many companies are up. Here we go. We have 15 down, five up. And I think the main reason why, even though... Uh, what's that? Three quarters of the companies are down today in this particular sector, and it's only down by a small amount, is because those mining companies, the biggest companies on the ASX, BHP, Rio Tinto, and even Westpac, which is another big company on the ASX, are all up. In fact, if we look at this by market cap, uh, yeah, quite a f in the top 12 or 13, four of those companies are up. Um, so that's probably why the ASX 20 was not down all that much. Anyway, so not the worst day on the ASX today. Um, small odds down 1%, but that's understandable. You're going to see more weakness in the small caps on a day like this than the bigger companies uh, because those who invest in small caps tend to be a little bit more fearful. Well, I shouldn't say that. They tend to be a little bit more trigger happy on days like this and are more likely to sell the companies because they uh, become infested with fear. Anyway, so let's have a look at the announcements that were released today on April the 15th, 2024, that caused a little bit of interest in me, but maybe have a look. And where shall we start? In fact, let's have a look at the announcement list. And we'll start with, we'll start with whatever company comes first. If ComSec announcement page updates, there it is. Takes a while to update. There's Coventry Group going into a training halt. Of course, Comsec just takes its time. The first announcement was not released at 8.15. Sometimes you have to, oh, why Comsec? Why do you do this to me? Um, maybe that was the first announcement. That could have actually been the first announcement. Sorry, Comsec. Sorry, Comsec, I um, have been a little bit unfair to you because I actually think that was the first price-sensitive announcement, not the overall uh, first announcement. But anyway, uh, the first 
actual announcement that Decor's interested in me was Genesis Plus. Uh, I do own this company, and they released an announcement titled Profit Guidance. Now, Profit Guidance could be anything. It could be a profit downgrade, could be a profit upgrade. So I open actually actually opened up this announcement a touch nervous. Now, not completely nervous because the share price of Genus Plus has been in an uh, absolute tear over the past month or so, which makes me think the market was expecting some sort of profit upgrade. And that exactly is what this particular announcement is from Genus, Genus Plus, Genus Plus. This is an earnings guidance upgrade. Why didn't I just announce, have this as the uh, title? Uh, I would have actually opened this announcement up with lots of, lots of excitement, not a little bit of trepidation and a little bit of excitement. Anyway, earnings upgrade, uh, this is exactly what I want to see. This is my favorite type of announcement, a profit upgrade. When companies typically release a profit upgrade, you see the share price um, go on a bit of a tear because most of the institutions who follow the company or earn the company have to redo their models with new numbers. And they come out with higher price targets. And sometimes that can take a few months to play out. And I actually have done a little bit of research on this. And when a company does release a profit upgrade, it can take about six to nine months for the news to really filter through in terms of the share price. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I do play these types of announcements. So this is a pretty good announcement. They're talking about EBITDA uh, growth compared to normalized EBITDA of 36.8 million uh, to be in the range 20 to 25% exceeding the previous guidance of 10 to 15%. So this is a pretty good upgrade. They also talk about why they're upgrading the numbers. Uh, recent The upgrade guidance, recent contract awards, and increased momentum in industry tailwinds. That's one of the reasons why I took a position in this company tailwinds in this industry supports management's continued uh, confidence in the growth and resilience of the business in the current market environment and its continued growth in financial year 25 and beyond. So a brilliant announcement from Genus Plus. Let's have a look at the or oh, how the market reacted. I have a feeling the market is, or the share price is up a little bit. Yeah, up a little bit. Open at $1.96 and within a few seconds, it fell to $1.90. And at one point today, the share price was down. You very rarely see the share price down when a company releases a profit upgrade. In fact, very rarely you do you see that. Now, why was the share price down today? Why has there not been a significant reaction from the market? So let's have a look at the chart, and this should explain why. Share price has been an absolute tear. Now, let's go back to June last year. This is when I became interested in this company. Now, I've been following this company because they listed, listed, a little bit further along. Actually, they listed way, yeah, listed in late 2020. So I was following this company and the share price was not really in any uptrend until I did see the share price breakout. There was a little bit of an uptrend here back in late uh, 2021. Uh, but I wasn't really following the company at that point in time, but I was starting to follow the company back at the start of 2023 and the share price broke out in June. I did take a trading position. Then I sold that trading position because the shares in this company were illegally traded. And I thought that was the wrong decision. And then I bought back in. Uh, and I've uh, put this company into my small cap portfolio and I'm not trading it at all. And that was a good decision because the share price has gone significantly higher from there. And in fact, uh, just at the start of the year, the share price of Genus Plus, uh, just before, in fact, the last few trading days of December, uh, the share price of this company was $1.24. Now it's $1.92. So the share price of Genus Plus has increased 50% from late December. And you can see the rise in share price last week. Uh, so last week, uh, between what was the 8th and 12th of April, share price increased from about $1.60 to $1.90 or just over $1.90. So it seems like, this is me uh, hypothesizing, seems like there was a lot of belief that the company could release a profit upgrade. Now, I'm not going to be cynical and say there was already people out there who knew that the company was going to release a profit upgrade because there's no proof around that. Um, you could say this is proof. I don't know, but uh, the market has liked this company for a while. So there's been a little bit of exuberance, a little bit of um, continued positive sentiment driving the share price higher. 
And then the company released a profit upgrade and I think um, the market expected it. That's all I'm saying. That's the reason why the share price hasn't had a massive bounce. The market was expecting Genesis Plus to release a profit upgrade. Chart looks absolutely brilliant, but because the share price has increased 50% in the last four months, it would be very healthy for the share price to go on a little bit of a breather. Now go sideways. Um, this is like um, a drunk person going on a bender. Uh, on occasion, you just want to stop drinking for a while to recover just a little bit. Not that I've ever done it. Um, yeah, anyway. So it's Genesis Plus. And the other thing I want to point out is increase in volume. You can see these perks in volume. That's actually a good sign. That could be cross trades, but these are pretty big cross trades if they are. And that's a good sign that there are fund managers really interested in this company, and they should be, because again, even the management said, there is a lot of tailwinds in this industry moving forward. And that's one of the reasons I've taken a longer term position in the company. Okay, so Genesis Plus, good day for them, I suppose, still up. I would have expected it to be up a little bit more because this was a profit upgrade. Uh, let's have a look at the second company. We'll do this by release time of the announcements. Except if it's the Pennies Four Seasons. I'm going to leave those two companies to the end. Uh, and I think the next one, I was going to possibly feature Tomo Diagnostics. So Tomo Diagnostics secures significant order for HIV self-test. At one point today, the share price was up about 27%. Now it's up only 3%. Uh, so there was an initial excitement about the announcement, but the, the, a lot of selling came in during the day. Uh, and I actually don't, yeah, it, it was a very small order. They say significant order. The order was like $700,000. I don't know. Don't really follow that company all that closely. Uh, there's Encel. So they're doing a cover raising, uh, making a purchase. And the market seems to love this acquisition from Encel. That's why the share price is now higher. I'll have a look at the chart for Encel at the end of the video. And um, GQG. I will also go into feature Tauga Group. That was another company I was going to look at. Uh, the Tanji Anode Project Feed Study delivers strong results. That sounds pretty good. I opened it up and it all went right over my head, right over my head. But the market likes it. Share price up 6.1%. Now, if you look at the chart, nothing to write home about. And when you look at Tauga Group's chart, in fact, let's do it now. Why not? Let's do it now. Why do I say there's nothing to write home about? Share price is up 6%. This is why. Share price in downtrend. We did see a nice little bounce. Uh, and even though the share price is up 6%, you can't really see it on the chart because the yeah, share price is quite volatile for this company. It wasn't that long ago, the share price of Tower Group got to $2. That was almost a year ago. Now the share price is 80 cents. Okay. Next one is. Drone Shield. So we'll look at that later. I was very excited to see Drone Shield release their Pennies 4C. A lot of times you'll see the good Pennies 4C is released earlier. But one of the things or one of the tricks I usually do is when a company typically releases their Pennies 4C at a certain time and then the next quarter they release it earlier than they usually do, that's typically a good sign. And on the flip side, if a company releases their Pennies 4C later than they usually do, that's typically a bad sign. Not always, but Typically, now just because a company releases their opinions for C early, maybe they do it all the time. Um, so I'm not sure with Drone Shield, I think typically they do release it fairly early. Okay, so and the next company, Findy. Okay, there we are. Findy granted white label ATM license. So this was what well, sounds positive. This is what I was looking for. Uh, for Findy to be granted this white label ATM license from the Bank of India, whatever it's called, Bank. Yeah, I think it's actually called the Bank of India. Anyway, share price down, 4.4%. What's going on here? So let's open up this particular announcement and maybe there is something in there uh, that could explain why the market is not that excited about this particular uh, announcement. Reserve Bank of India, so I forgot the reserve. Anyway, digital payments and financial services provider, Findi, is pleased to announce that its Indian subsidiary has been granted provisional authorization to set up, own, and operate white label ATMs by the RBI. Granting of the white label ATM license to its subsidiary, uh, TSI, is only subject to TSI submitting system order report within six months 
to obtain final authorization for rollout of WLA, which is the white label ATMs. The systems audit is an annual regulatory compliance requirement for all WLA holders and relates to cyber, data, and systems security. With the granting of the final authorization, Findi plans on deploying Findi branded ATMs across India with a strong focus on semi urban and rural areas. So, my thinking is this is not complete authorization. They still have to um, do a bit of a uh, go through a final authorization. And what the market is thinking now, there's a slight risk. There is a risk. And the market doesn't like risk. In fact, the market hates risk. So, even the slightest increase in risk, uh, the market will sell off in the company, even though more than likely, probably 99.9999% likely that this authorization will go through. They will be granted the final authorization. Um, more than likely it will. Uh, the market just hates risk. So they're going to sell. And that's why the share price is down today, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. However, let's have a look at the chart for Findi because I'll have a look at the charts for all these companies. And Findi has been on an absolute tear. And this is not the end of the downtrend, not at all. Um, beautiful chart for Findi. Amazing volume coming through uh, since uh, October. And in fact, the share price has increased from about 50 cents, 40 to 50 cents, all the way up to $3.04. So it does need a little bit of a breather. And again, this could be, some people might say, this is just uh, uh, buying the rumor, selling the fact. This is just now a fact and they're selling it. I don't really believe in that sort of thing. Sometimes I do, but not this sort of announcement. Anyway, so share price down a little bit today, um, and I would expect this is not the end of the downtrend, still on a beautiful uptrend, or still in a beautiful uptrend. Okay, so that's Fiddy, and the next one, I should actually list down the order I want to look at these, um, because I have no idea which one is next. There's Coria. That's right, Fiddy and Coria released their announcements right after another, and then Coventry released their announcement. Commentary launch announcement. They're doing acquisition and a couple raising, but I did have a quick look at the Coventry investor presentation. So this ticket code of this company, CYG, it's a fairly small company, uh, market cap of 140 million, but they are profitable, but they have really low margins. That's one of the main things I have a problem with this company is they're really low margins. So let's have a look at their margins. Coventry group, this is via FinChat. So let's have a look at the financials. So pretty good. This is our yearly revenues. Probably can't see it because it's fairly, fairly small. So revenues are about $358 million in the last financial year. Gross profit, $143 million. Let's have a look at the ratios. And there should be margins here, gross margin. So gross profit margin is about 39%. EBITDA margin 3.9%, operating margin 2.9%, and net profit margin of 0.7%. So really low margins. So why am I talking about margins when it comes to this acquisition? So I opened up the presentation. I just wanted to see what this acquisition is in regards. So acquisition of still masters, and they're doing equity raising to fund the acquisition. I might be a bit of debt. I don't know. I haven't had a close look at the um, acquisition itself. Here they are, the acquisition transaction highlights. Uh, so a cost of $42.1 million. Uh, are they going to debt? Maybe. I'm not going through all that. I'm not a shareholder. And more than likely, I won't be a shareholder. Okay, so this is where it becomes interesting for me. This transaction overview, and it wasn't the overview. It was these two little, so what do you call these graphs, whatever you want to call it? And we have revenue, pro forma combined revenue on the top, pro forma combined EBITDA. So I looked at the revenue and I went, oh, this still masters is actually a really small company. So the actual financial year 23 numbers, coverage group provided $358.5 million of revenue and still masters $38 million of revenue. I went, wow, that's a huge difference. So not adding much to the company. And then I had a look at the EBITDA, pro forma EBITDA. Coverage group 17, steel mass is 16 or 6.9. I went, wait there, the margins of this particular acquired company are significantly greater, significantly greater than coverage group. Now, the one little bit of a concern here is the forecast 
revenue for steel masks is, is going to fall, is expected to fall in financial year 24, and the EBITDA is expected to be flat. But the main thing here is demanders of this company will improve substantially because of this acquisition. I wonder if they talk about that anywhere here. Let's see if they do talk about this. Uh, yeah, I haven't, haven't gone all the way through this. Talking about Coventry overview. Nice increase in sales for Coventry Group over the last seven years or so. Nice increase in EBITDA. EBITDA is growing. Trading outdate and outlook. So uh, things are looking positive for the company. Trading update. Everything's looking positive. 1.2% um, growth in sales, 11.9% growth in um, on audited EBITDA. They're doing an ERP project, Steel Masters overview. What if they're going through? Yeah, nice EBITDA sales mix. I'll be screaming about the increase in margins, how this will really improve margins. Oh, there we go. Look, here we go. On this, they do actually mention it here. Increased pro forma margins, increased scale of operations, significant earnings per share accretion, maybe because of the significant increase in margins. And they're only buying this at six times a financial year 23 EBITDA. Um, so yeah, it's not a massive acquisition, but it will improve the margins of this company. So yeah, an interesting pro forma financials. There we go. Actually. Didn't have to go through all this because we've just gone straight here. EBITDA margins from 5.4% to 6.9%. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a really nice increase in EBITDA margin. So this actually looks on the surface like a really good acquisition by Coventry Group. Now, the company shares are not trading just yet because they're doing the capital raising. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the market react really well to this particular announcement and the share price pop up significantly when they do start trading. So yeah, nice acquisition from Coventry Group. And the last uh, non appendix 4 c announcement I want to look at is from Foss Capital. There it is, Ruffett Guidance. So just like, just like uh, Genus Plus, they've titled it the same, Profit Guidance. Tells me nothing. Uh, oh, I've lost it. Where is it? There it is. Profit. So Foss Capital is a small company. I'm pretty sure they do something in regards, or they sell lights, something like that. Share price uh, up 7% today. Market cap is 11.6 million. So this is a small company. So let's have a look at the profit guidance. So obviously by the share price um, being higher, we know this is positive. It's not really an upgrade. Um, but they did say here that the company is expecting its earnings for the current period to differ materially from its previous corresponding period. So what they're saying here is they're going to see some pretty good growth from last year. Um, and this is the guidance. So revenue up from 17 million to 22 to 23 million. EBITDA more than double from 0 0.74 million last year. Um, and profit up from 540,000 to possibly as high as 1.1 million. So possibly profit is doubling as well. Now it's on a low base, but still for a company with a market cap of say 11, 12 million, that's nice little growth. So I'm just gonna actually have a look at what this company does. I was hoping it was going to be in that particular announcement. Sometimes when a company releases an announcement, they will have an about section, company update. So just two weeks ago, they released a company update. And they're still, still not telling. Oh, there it is. Look, FOD, FOSS manufactures and distributes. So there's not, there is an about section, but uh, it's down the bottom here. It doesn't say about. Usually it says about. It says this company manufactures and distributes commercial, industrial, and architectural LED lighting. I knew it's something to do with lighting, but there it is. So definitely a company to possibly put onto your watch list. Let's have a look at the chart. And I have a feeling this chart looks pretty ugly. Not the share price is in downtrend. It's just illiquidly traded. And you might be able to see it. 
yeah, this does look, this does have the telltale signs of a liquid, e, e liquidly traded company. Uh, this company lists on the ASX back in the middle of 2021. Um, so it doesn't trade every day. And you see the share price wildly up and down um, on certain days. So there's one day here, uh, the 22nd of February, share price up 21%. And then the next day, it was down 17.4%. That is a sign that the company is illiquidly traded. And you'll probably be able to see that. Let's have a look. What's well, quite a few buyers and sellers. Let's have a look at the trade history. Yeah, there's big gaps in the trade history. So there was a trades on the 18th of March and then nothing until the 3rd of April. Uh, so there are big gaps in the trading of this company. So even though uh, there's quite a few buyers and sellers on the list there, uh, this company is still illiquidly traded. So that could be one negative thing for you if you like this company. But again, this company does look pretty cheap, but the share price or the chart doesn't look that attractive just yet. This could have been a breakout, but not quite. All right, so that's uh, the five announcements. Well, actually, that's four announcements um, I wanted to look at apart from the Appendix 4Cs. So let's have a look at the Appendix 4Cs. We'll start with Drone Shield and the market liked it. Up 11.7%. I was, when I opened up this Appendix 4C, I was not convinced the market would like it. Put it that way. So I was really interested to see how the share price uh, uh, either rose or fell today. And I was, intri I haven't looked at the investor presentation yet. I was really intrigued that the share price opened up higher. Um, opened up at 89 cents and then rose to 99 cents during the day. So a small amount of selling, but not a lot. So let's have a look at why I could have understood if the market sold off just by looking at the Appendix 4C, um, the quarterly cash flow report or the you know section one. Uh, so receives a customer $7.1 million. Now, to put this in context, last quarter they had receipts from customers of about 47 million. We'll have a look at the cash receipts history for this company in a second. Now, I was expecting a significant decrease in cash receipts because I think that was a one-off. This has happened to the company in the past. And the company was operating cash flow negative by $10.7 million. So I was thinking at this point, I wonder if the market would panic because of the significant decrease in receipts and the company was operating cash flow negative by over $10 million and probably free cash flow negative by, oh no, they don't spend a lot of money in capital expenditure. There you go. Okay, so let's go back up to the top and look at this, this page right here. And it's very important to note that the revenue receipts of a company can be widely different. They don't always match, particularly if a company is growing and particularly if a company's, um, you know, trade receivables. Uh, so when a company, uh, is allowed to repay their um, person or the company who they bought stuff off, they're allowed to take three months to repay. Um, you can get wild differences between receipts and revenue, particularly if the company is growing at a fairly quick rate, like Drone Shield. So I'm really happy they included the revenue in this particular report because there is a big difference between the revenue and the cash flow. The operating cash flow or the cash receipts, not the cash flow, the cash receipts. So $7.1 million of cash receipts for the quarter, but revenue of $16.4 million, which is 10 times greater than the previous corresponding period, which was $1.6 million, low base, however. And even the cash receipts, $7.1 million, was the highest ever for the March quarter. Now, to be honest with you, that's probably not something to really gloat about, because the cash receipts of this company has significantly grown over the past few years. And you should be seeing cash receipts on uh, most quarters being a record quarter, not a record overall quarter, but the record quarter for that particular uh, record quarter for that particular quarter, like the third quarter, fourth quarter, first quarter, or second quarter. Main difference between, oh, actually, they actually say, they actually say why there was a difference between cash receipts and revenue. I did not get this far into the announcement. The main difference between revenues and cash receipts in the first quarter was due to US government orders where deliveries took place in the first quarter and payments due in the second quarter, 30 days past delivery. Um, so they probably would allow the US government 
to pay you know, a few months after. In this case, one month after they have delivered a substantial portion of which has now been received. So there you go. It's just a lay in the order being completed and cash receipts being received. Sometimes it could be two, three months difference. And that probably was a pretty big order as well. Uh, they talk about strong start, 2024. So all this is uh, something I didn't read. Anyway, overall, the main thing is the market liked it. So let's have a look at the cash receipts history for drone shield. Here it is, uh, cash receipts history for drone shield. This is my, I suppose you call this my um, spreadsheet. Uh, and Maybe I should increase it. There we go. Let's make this even bigger. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the main thing here is there have been quarters in the past with Drone Shield where the cash receipts were, grew significantly from one quarter to the next, and then the next quarter they saw a significant decrease in receipts. We saw this in 2021. Receipts from went from 1.7 million, 7.4 million back to 1.7 million. Exactly the same thing has happened in the last three quarters. Receipts went from 7.7 .7 million up to 47.9 million, back down to 7.1 million. Nothing to be concerned about, in my opinion. Now, they mentioned this was the best March quarter they've ever had. It was by $100,000. So $7 million in the April quarter last year, $7.1 million in this particular quarter. I remember they said they had $1.6 million of revenue in the March quarter last year. So there's a massive difference between the revenue and cash receipts one year ago, just like there is this particular quarter. So a good quarter for Drone Shield and the market liked it. I was not sure if the market would like it. I thought the market would be con concerned about the significant decrease in cash receipts and the company was operating cash flow positive. But this shows me the market is a little bit more savvy than maybe I gave it credit or I, I give it credit for. Anyway, uh, next on is Coria. We'll have a look at the cash receipts history for this company as well. Uh, and the market liked this one as well. Okay, that's good. It's good. I actually did like this one as well. Um, and I'll talk about why I like this particular Penix 4C, even though they were not operating cash flow positive. And this is a really big, um, this is a, you know, it's a, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's um, a very important point, I suppose, about seasonality. Uh, some companies do have seasonality. It's quite obvious. Aurea has seasonality with the cash receipts. So I'll talk about why they have seasonality. Okay, so let's have a look. I won't go through the commentary. Uh, I have to go all the way down to page 23 to get to the quarterly cash flow report. Okay. So cash receipts of 20.6 million, uh, year to date 76.4 million, operating cash flow negative by 797,000, uh, but for the year to date 8.4 million operating cash flow positive. Okay, so uh, this was another case where I was wondering if the market would uh, punish Coria because they were uh, operating cash flow negative and receipts had dropped in the last two. Quarters. So let's have a look at why this is not a concern because there is seasonality when it comes to Korea. So let's go back to my spreadsheet. If I can find it here somewhere. I have to I have to put in TIG code for Korea. Well, there we go. And here we go. Here is Korea's beautiful quarterly. Cash receipts history. Okay. Oh, yeah. First thing to note is the cash receipts history of Korea has been increasing at a really good rate. Uh, so up from about two point, we'll say actually two million dollars in 2021, up to 20.6 million. And you notice it doesn't go up in a straight line. And you also notice if you look for patterns, there is definitely a pattern here. So typically, the record quarter for Korea in terms of cash receipts is the September quarter. It happened in um, 2020, happened in 2021, happened in 2022, happened in 2023. So that's four Octobers or September quarters in a row. And you noticed 
after that record, uh, that really good September quarter, the following two quarters are down. The December quarter is down, March quarter is down. It happened in 2020. It went from 4.5 to 2.5 to 1.9. It happened in 2021, from 10.7 to 10 to 9.7. It happened in 2022, from 23.5 to 18.1 to 14.8. It happened again this year. It went from 30.1 to 25.7 to 20.6. Now, just based off what we have seen the last four years, the next quarter is going to be better. So we'll probably say towards 25 million, but then the next quarter is going to be an amazing quarter. And I'd say just based off the growth in the September quarters, I would not be shocked to see a $40 million cash receipts quarter for Corey up. So it's definitely seasonality when it comes to quarters cash receipts, just based off this particular history. So that's why I'm not concerned about this particular quarter. In fact, I'm encouraged because the company was slightly operating cash flow negative in the worst quarter. So this is a good quarter for Corea. Let's have a look at the charts for both Drone Shield and Corea. I should have done this earlier with Drone Shield. So yeah, the chart looks brilliant. So we noticed that little bit of weakness when the director sold out. Share price fell. Um, this is late February. Share price fell significant. I think they sold it a little bit later, like early March. When they released their half-year results, the share price fell a fair bit on the next day, and then the director sold. Share price fell all the way down to $0.60, cents, and that was the time to buy. Share price has now rallied about 50% since then, and it is now at a record high. Chart looks pretty good for Drone Shield. The other thing I like to look at is volume. Always like to look at volume. Look at that expansive expansion in volume um, since the start of 2024 as the share price has moved into a really strong uptrend. That's exactly what you want to see. Drone Shield is liked by the investing community. And when I say investing community, I'm talking about institutions and fund managers. They like this company. That's what's driving the share price higher and the valuation of this company up to over $500 million market cap. And finally, Corio. Don't forget, there was a takeover bid for this company and the directors of Corio said, get lost. You are uh, undervaluing this company. You are being opportunistic. Uh, we are much better than that. And that's why the share price popped up uh, last week. Was it last week? Yeah, last week. Uh, popped up on Monday, the 8th of April by 33.3%. And the chart looks pretty good. So yeah, this is a turnaround. Well-defined downtrend. Coming into 2023, share price went sideways, maybe rising a little bit through time. And the share price broke out on the 28th of March. Should have been noticing, should have been paying attention. A share price broke out of above 28 cents, and that was the time to buy that over the next few days. And now the share price is 41.5 cents for Korea. And yeah, a really good quarter. I like this quarter for Korea, just like I like the quarter for Chrome Shield. So let's have a look at some charts. Some more charts. We've already been looking at charts. So we have a look at Ansel. I bought some shares in Ansel. We saw the share price pull back. It was enough of a pullback for me to buy some shares. Um, so the share price broke out the other day on news of this acquisition above about $25.30. I bought at about $25. What was it? Yeah, I wrote it down what I bought it at. $25.68. So not quite at the breakout level, but it was enough of a pullback today for me to take a position in Ansel. And if I see the share price fall below, say, $25, that's uh, sort of my stop loss. Um, and that could happen. So just because I trade these companies doesn't mean the share price is going to move in the direction I think they will. Sometimes it moves in the other direction. And I am wrong quite often. But the main thing is, when you are wrong, take your loss quickly. So you just want to have a small loss. But when you're right, you want to ride that as long as possible. So if Ansel went on a massive long-term uptrend, if the share price went from $25 to $100, hopefully I will be on that ride for the majority of that run. That's how you are successful using these sort of strategies. And GQG, I also, this also, Share price of this company also broke out start of 2024. And I'm thinking of maybe trading more breakouts instead of waiting for the announcement when then the share price breaks out. So typically what I do is I look for a corresponding or 
coincidental, not a coincidental, uh, yeah, corresponding breakout on positive financial news. But a lot of times the breakouts happen before the positive financial news. And this is a company that broke out, started of uh, January at about $1.70. Now the share price is $2.30. So this is the sort of pattern I'm going to be looking for more and I'll try to trade the breakout. I've done this successfully in the past and I have bought back in. And the reason I bought, not bought back in, I've never owned this company before. And the reason I bought some shares in this company because the company released their funds under management on the 8th of April and there was positive. Share price popped up on that day by almost 6.5%. And today the share price has pulled back about 4%. And look where the share price pulled back to. A nice little support level right on $2.30. So I took a position in this company at $2.34 because of this particular pullback. Uh, current share price is, let's have a look. Let's have a look at how GQG is doing. $2.30, right on the support level. Okay. And I think that's all I'm going to have for today's video. I've gone on long enough. I rambled too long, Might some might say. Uh, there is still some out there, some viewers out there who think, my videos are too long, but a lot of you, thankfully, think my videos are a good length. Anyway, so that's all I got for this uh, ASX breakdown of video. Hope I've shared some ideas with you. Main reason I do these videos is to share ideas. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in this particular video, uh, the comment section of this video, not the video itself. That would be hard to do. And otherwise, I am financial. I'm not. A, I am not a financial advisor. I almost said I am a financial advisor. I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.